வணக்கம் இன்றைக்கி கான்வர்சேஷன் சீரீஸில் என் கூட பேச போகிறது மிஸ்டர் கிருஷ்ணசுவாமி ஹீ இஸ் அ ரிட்டையர்டு டிஐஜி சிஆர்பிஎஃப்னு சொல்கிறோம் இல்லையா சென்ட்ரல் ரிசர்வ் போலீஸ் ஃபோர்ஸ் அதிலேருந்து வாலண்டியர் ரிட்டையர்மெண்ட் கொடுத்துட்டு இப்போது இன்ட்ரெஸ்டிங்கான ஒரு விஷயம் பண்ணிகிட்ருக்காரு இது வந்து ஒரு ஐ ஓப்பனராக இருக்கும் எல்லாேருக்கும் நான் நம்புகிறேன் ஒரு நாளைக்கு இருநூறு நாய்களுக்கு வந்து சாப்பாடு போட்டுட்ருக்காரு என்ன சார் அது இதை பற்றி என்ன பெருசாக பேச வரீங்க அப்படின்னு கேட்கலாம் அது எவ்வளோ ஒரு நோபல் எவ்வளோ ஒரு ஒரு முக்கியமான விஷயன்றது நாங்கள் பேசும்போது உங்களுக்கு புரியும் ஏன்னா மனிதன் மனித உயிர்கள் மட்டும் முக்கியம் அப்படின்னு நம்ம நினைக்கிறோம் இல்லையா அதுக்கு மேலே பிரபஞ்சத்தில் எவ்வளோ உயிர்கள் இருக்குது முக்கியமாக இப்போ இருக்க காலத்தில் நாய்கள் என்விரான்மெண்ட் பெர்ஸ்பெக்டிவில் பார்த்தா நிறைய பேசலாம் சிம்பிளாக நாங்கள் ஒரே இடத்துல வச்சு நீங்கள் நிறைய விஷயங்கள் புரிஞ்சுப்பீங்க ஸோ அதுக்கு மனசு வேணும் மனுஷனை பார்த்துக்கிறது மட்டும் இல்லாமல் நம்மளை சுயமாக பார்த்துக்கிறது மட்டும் இல்லாமல் அதுக்கு மேலே விலங்குகளையும் மற்ற உயிர்களையும் மதிக்கணும் நமக்கு உயிருக்கு நிகரான்றதுக்காக தான் இந்த கான்வர்சேஷன் ஸோ தேங்க்யூ சார் தேங்க்ஸ் வந்ததுக்கு நாற்பது வருஷமாக நீங்கள் சிஆர்பிஎஃப்பில் இருந்திருக்கீங்க ஸோ யூ சர்வ்ட் பார்லிமெண்ட்டுக்கு செக்யூரிட்டி ஃபோர்ஸஸில் இருந்திருக்கீங்க ப்ரைம் மினிஸ்டர் ஆஃபீஸில் இருந்திருக்கீங்க ஸோ இதெல்லாம் ஒரு ஹை ப்ரெஷர் ஜாப்ஸ் எப்பவுமே வந்து ஒரு விஜிலியாக இருக்கணும் இல்லையா வாட் ஆர் தி லேர்னிங்ஸ் ஃபார் யூ in your career of 40 years i'm going to talk a lot about uh, you know animal welfare and stuff adukku munadi few things about you and the job what you did because adha lerndu or transition i you take care of animals now and it's a, it's an amazing thing so adanaladha kekkara see the the job the central reserve police force la irukadhu because uh, uh, you lead troops and uh, one of the major uh, responsibilities of central reserve police force is uh, combating counter insurgency insurgency uh, at the time of my joining somewhere in i joined in 74 so and the same like northeast the like, insurgency was more the number one state which was uh, there on the lead was mizoram mizoram nagaland manipur tripura these four of them were uh, uh, in insurgency afflicted we can call it and uh, the government had its own ways the government has to find solution for insurgency because insurgents are basically indians Indian. they are our people so it is not they are not uh, aliens right. or enemy we can't treat them as enemy we have to treat them as our own brethren who have gone on a wrong way wrong step they have taken so we have to government has to correct them and bring them back into the main line main line that is the responsibility of the government we support as a norm of the government we try to execute that at the same time protecting Uh, any casualties any injuries to the inmates as well as to the security forces the surprise is always there with the insurgents because they are part and parcel of the local land the villagers they will amidst the villagers there will be insurgents uh, people who have taken to arms they are called insurgents right all right so you can't wholly keep uh, firing at them on a doubt you have to be that sure about that yes the person is definitely is going to kill you or they're definitely going to you are going to be affected or that has to be the fire guy is moving with the weapon so he has to be caught so then only you so the surprise is always with the insurgent so that is where uh, we have to be extraordinarily careful and uh, as an officer leading a troop of people you like to be lead from the front because anything happening to us it should happen first to you that is the way you look at it right. because you are not going to be happy if something happens to your men no man so your men you have to protect because they are protecting uh, they are fighting for the country right. completed my tenure with uh, prime minister security and i had gone to uh, assam to head a battalion i was in lower barpeta lower assam when this happened but uh, they were uh, again uh, fortunate to be considered they were uh, shortlisted a few people who had been there in the prime minister security and parliament wanted to draw one of them uh, to head the the six so i happened to be called it is right. just a chance somebody who knew me happened to be you know uh, in and around uh, the parliament security so they thought perhaps i'm i have the capability to head a force like that head and head the security wing of the parliament so i was drafted as joint director security parliament house in charge of operations so the entire uh, access regulation into the parliament becomes my baby right. i have a boss uh, definitely right. but the 
on the ground. I, I have to be. So, you literally anything is left to imagination. So, how many gates are there, which are to be closed, which are to be, who are to be permitted and ensuring that this happens. Otherwise, the regulations are there. It does not happen. So, and uh, after the terrorist attack also ensured that the security system has to be upgraded. Right. So, the current security system which you say, which uh, we started in somewhere in 2002 and uh, I left in 2007, by the time it was almost 90 percent completely installed. Uh. So, I do have a reasonable contribution to the decision making in, in, in uh, ensuring that system is in place. So, that is it. So, that is the difference between uh, the northeast and this. Right. So, northeast that there is no access control, you do not have any access control. Here you are controlling, regulating the access within a confined zone. Right. But here it is a high risk category of people, there there is a normal human population. Right. Population can be taken to task inclu including uh, the paramilitary force itself. Right. So, we have to be on the guard. So, we go by one of the, I go particularly uh, as one of the things that prevention is better than cure. So, you try to sanitize the entire area of operation. I have been given an area of operation with a few villages under me. So, I have to ensure that yes, no, there are no terrorists moving into that area, moving inside that area. Have your intelligence and frequent visits, frequent uh, ambushes, patrols, various uh, right. uh, modes of uh, operation. You use various modes of operation to ensure that yes, the terrorists are uh, kept guessing. Right. So, they try to avoid. So, the local population is protected, you are protected. So, that, that's, that's why. Place. Unless you encounter, the, the encounter is open. Yeah, that's so, a different yeah, yeah, that's scenario a, altogether. The, always we say the first bullet is, even in the VIP, VIP security, what we say is the first bullet cannot be avoided because the surprise is always. But we are trained to that level. The first bullet, the shot, the sound, immediately we should be able to react and protect, protect the uh, VVIP. Right. So, the same thing is applicable. So, you say which bullet has got your name in it? We, we, don't, don't, know. we don't know. You don't know. <laughs> Putting all these things aside, you know, you were a, you are an officer, you had a battalion and obviously, you know, uh, you were, uh, you know, in the forces which were monitoring the parliament. After you retired, how did you find this thing towards animals? See, right now you are feeding 200 dogs a day. Yeah, this did not didn't happen the very next day. <laughs> this there in Delhi when we were there in the colony, uh, because we had dogs at home slowly and slowly from one it became two, two became four and more of, uh, you know, it is giving SLM to them, injured, uh, hurt. So, you have to keep them at home for 15 days and by the time they refuse to go and you are not able to accept that they are being outside. So, like that the numbers went up. And uh, there, the, within the colony, the small number of pack of dogs, five, six, they became attached to us. So, it became five inside and five outside, but that, we did not go beyond that. Right. The, the, but coming here also for the first year, I was there in Ananagar in a second floor apartment and with the five dogs. So, by that time, even with the five dogs itself, the neighborhood was not very comfortable. <laughs> so, uh, I, we could not uh, think of. I think I uh, mean looking after anybody else. But my daughter, my daughter, the elder daughter who is uh, called uh, Arudra, she is Arudra Krishna Swami, she is a doctorate, she has a doctorate in uh, choreography and uh, etc. So, she said yes, best thing is so you move out from the thing to the outskirts where you get an independent house on rent and where you can have these dogs. So mainly for our own dogs, we moved out to this thing and uh, it was first one or two occasions where we found a dog which was uh, being occasionally being given biscuits and all that. Suddenly, you find that it is limping, broken limb and uh, then you rush them to the vet and uh, vet says, yes, okay, bandage, you keep them for two months, one month here and all that till the time. So, at that time, I never thought of uh, the thing and the finance. Oh, when you ask the doctor, we are going to uh, your uh, surgery plus uh, boarding and all that will cost around 30, 40, 50,000 depending upon what is the injury. Is it where, where to go? So, 
between friends and families, he said, yeah, why don't you just put it up and uh, try to see uh, people with similar uh, wishes, you know, well wishes. So, they may be able to help you and uh, support, support you. So, so it the, happened once or twice. See, one is a thought to feed their dogs, to take care of the dogs. Number two is, the, is handling the pressure, the financial burden of it yeah. as well. So, I really appreciate you on this note, sir, because it's not easy to do. First, to have a thought to take care of uh, you know, something outside than your, you know, yeah, people are these days very selfish. You know, they think it's, you know, forget taking care of dogs. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, they're so self-obsessed and they, yeah. they are focused on taking care of themselves. They don't even consider their family members first. Mm, yeah. And then comes, uh, you know, uh, being sensitive to the to the other the animals, animals yeah, as well. That's right. So, right now, you say you feed 200 dogs every day, isn't it? Yeah. 200 dogs Just every day. Just 200 now. Yeah, 200. <laughs> <laughs> so, how do you manage these things? Like, what time do you start cooking and how, do you, how does your day look oh, like? Oh, yeah. That's a very good question. I myself don't know how when the day starts and when it ends. So, to start the day, we start the previous night. So, to start? To start the days, today's uh, activities, we start at the end of the day, we start preparing for the next day. Because <laughs> we have to prepare, you know, the entire preparation is done because now we are basically, we are trying to feed them with uh, uh, um, rice and liver or rice and chicken cooked together. So, it makes a... Uh, reasonably good food and be a good food and a good meal with a healthy meal. So, you have to cook almost like 25 to 30 kgs of rice. So, for that the wherewithals, over a period of time we kept on building it up. It's all done in house, in, house. in the normal kitchen. <laughs> so, that's, that's what I'm saying. That's, yeah, that's no, something amazing. So, we have big bowls, big utensils, we have purchased some 5-6 of them. And uh, at a time, four or five of them go on the thing. So, the previous night itself, before we um, uh, sleep, we keep the bowls ready <laughs> for the next day morning because you have to say one time. So, how long does it take? Roughly like four to six hours to cook? In uh, the evening, we are just preparing, keeping the rice ready. ready. The morning, cooking starts in the morning at 5.30. 5.30 in the morning. 5 o'clock we are up and 5.30, yes, the bowls have to be on the oven. And uh, then it goes on, the first feed it starts at around uh, 8 or 8.30, somewhere between 8 and 8.30, first batch. So, we you have evolved over a period of time, 5 or 6 rounds, uh, we have taken a helper who finally gives the food on the ground. So, we have to give him the first time at 8.30, 40 bowls. 40 bowls. 40 bowls. We put everything in bowls. <laughs> so, <laughs> the setter, he takes the, he keeps the bowls over there and the people are, they are able to enjoy. So, it's not put it on, put on the ground and really collect the bowls. See the sensitivity. I really appreciate that. It's, this is another point uh, which, you know, people who watch it can really understand. Yeah, they, they it's have not to be given on bowls. It's not just food on the floor. No, it's, not at all. Not at bowls. all. It cannot be on the floor because our motto is, yes, we have to give them a life of dignity. The life of dignity speaks for itself. Now, everything has to be dignified. You have to treat them at par with, with the humans. Yeah. Only thing is, they are dependent on you. You are trying to help them. That is the only difference. Otherwise, yes, they should get food. They should get food reasonably and decently, good food, healthy food, and not thrown at them. They are invited to eat. So, it starts at 8.30 and uh, we finish by around 3 o'clock. 3 o'clock. So, you start feeding by 8.30 in the 8 morning 30. and goes off. Goes off at 3 o'clock. So, it's like then after that, 6, 6, 7 hours. Ah, yeah, yeah. This is with no break in between. Ah. My wife is able to come out of the kitchen by around 12.30 after finishing the mm -hmm. thing. So, then two batches are readily available for the helper to come because it takes every round for him right. takes around 45 minutes to 1 hour. So, it's not only food. We have kept the water bowls at all the places of feeding. Almost, so, almost like 30 bowls in that area. So, within the area where he feeds around 5 to 10, there will be at least one or two bowls in this corner of the street, that corner of the street. So, he has to clean the, the sink and so he carries two jerry can cans in the cycle of 10 liters each. So, he goes, cleans the water, cleans the bowl and pours water as well. So, they get water 
food and water both the things together an organization doing this you know they will have manpower they will have a yeah. structure <laughs> but you just you and your wife me and my wife the days where the helper is not able to come i will i am on the ground so three people uh, so three people so three, people three people cooking food for dogs every day yeah. and making sure 200 dogs eat yes. i mean it's a commendable service and not only that this was one one portion of it <laughs> with 200 dogs you can easily imagine any stretch of imagine will permit you to think at least four or five dogs will be sick ah. they'll require medical assistance medical attention because of the bites stone throwing by humans the injuries sustained because of accidents something or the other will be there and normal sickness not able to eat not coming so many things so those have to be attended by medication and or wherever is needed every second day i am taking some one of the dogs to the vet getting examined and bringing them back with the medication with that uh, prescri- prescribed prescriptions and continue to give them for that period and uh, we plan out sterilization along with this we plan out vaccination along with this sterilization so all these are stray dogs or all dog are dogs? stray dogs stray right on the road right. they are right on the road so you are a father for almost uh, yeah, I, I call myself daddy. Uh, <laughs> I, call, I call, call them yes. <laughs> come to daddy, come to daddy. <laughs> so, so that's those, universal daddy because this, I carry with them because whenever I have to take them for sterilization or to normal one dog to a doctor and easily carryable, I to drive myself, put the dog there in the car and then take them. But if it's for sterilization, then we try to take at least we have to book in advance. Right. It is not. you can't just walk in a private vet private vet uh, they normally don't undertake five, more than five or six surgeries in a day so almost one month ahead we have to seek them get it allotted so on that day you have to plan whom we have to going to take and uh, whether that guy will be catchable by you if not catchable by you then you have to take a dog yeah. catcher then book a driver oh it's it's yeah. not easy it's definitely yeah, not easy very high coordination is needed when people you know generally people ask what can what kind of a change can one human being bring mm. you know my efforts are going to be you know it's going to go for waste so that's what a common man thinks mm. see uh, one man and your wife obviously two people or three people put together taking care of 200 dogs is it's something amazing so uh, if one person can do so much imagine if uh, the society becomes a little more sensitive to yeah. you know animals around and the environment around wonders can happen isn't it wonderful yeah that's the definitely. whole point of this conversation See, a lot of people will be wondering. Uh, we don't. They'll be like people. A lot of people are in sur- survival mode, right? So they'll be like, uh, we don't have time to take care of ourselves. Yeah. Where can we go and find? I mean, where can we go take care of animals? But the point is, even if you feed one dog a day, which is on the road, yes. or one animal on the on on the you know on They're the streets, right. it can make a world of a difference. World of a difference, yeah. And uh, see what what I have seen. My experience of these three four years about particularly. they become human friendly these dogs the moment we start feeding them regularly they are not looking around for scrounging for food right so they are they know yes humans are giving they leave aside krishna swami or my wife or who is giving they understand that humans are giving so they are not running around to snap at every pa- passer by right. absolutely not otherwise with 200 go- dogs around the mean this i would have been spared now <laughs> so many bites would have been and you have not been bitten by even one dog not me the others are also no, no, not gentle, no, i'm just yeah. asking you this yeah, is yeah, a follow up question not, yeah not at see, all see this is such a another beautiful thing and right? most of the dogs good number of dogs i carry them in the car <laughs> first time and get and they are there and they are they are forcing them inside the car forcing the both these are times but yes they they are so sensitive so that's beautiful animals you can't get such such creatures life love. forms yeah. yeah oh that's why hoffy i was telling about is more than the food which you give the affection see they what they do is they don't rush the food at all first they come and lick you here and there and then rush the food oh, they thank you they little. thank you i don't know <laughs> yes so i said yes what we are giving is not just food it is affection as well we are parting to them and that is what keep lot is making them show their gratitude to us for you know that uh, how <laughs> we feel between ourselves me and my wife and children you your wife and your daughters you guys could have whatever the amount of the money what you saved or the pension what you get 
you could have been selfish you could have said no i'm going to spend it on myself i'm going to you know spend it on my family or whatever it is yeah. but you decided to spend it on on dogs or that on street dogs because i know it is not just about the food it's about the vaccination as you rightly said it is about the medical costs which comes with that <laughs> since you said <laughs> since you said more number of dogs <laughs> what is so you you run an organization called scooby yeah isn't it hmm. it's called scooby's scooby. animal care scooby's animal care yeah, right. and it's an it's like a society it's only uh, you know it's it's a non profit obviously correct yeah what is the vision for uh, how many or what is your vision for uh, yeah. scooby <laughs> we want to i'm not yeah. saying about the size yeah. see people might think uh, some might think watching this 200 dogs he's only feeding 200 dogs mm. but 200 feeding 200 dogs is not a easy Correct. task at all it needs a lot of heart and and soul uh, to do that so even if you think uh, you know i'm happy feeding 200 dogs it's still a big uh, service is what i would feel but what is your vision still the vision was initially that is slowly and slowly we should uh, enlarge our area of operation not confine it only to vegan is it limited to this is kubi's animal care going to look after only these 15 animals or it is going to do beyond right so he said yes in that area how can you say no if you are looking after stray animals you have to look after stray animals so that is the debate we used to have between us because we are enlarging our area of operation and then people do did take advantage so when it is open land some one one and a half years back when constructions had not started to do this level people it is a free for everybody free for all so there are some good samaritans who wanted to look after pups which was in and around their area but what they did was they were not looking after their <laughs> they were packing it up and coming and dumping it here oh. knowing fully well that somebody is caring okay. for the stray animals one way they were good that is okay they were not dying yes the population was going up <laughs> <laughs> but at say second time they are separating the mother so early 15 yeah. days 10 days old and all beyond that they cannot catch so they we used to bring it in a dunny bag and uh, dead of night come in for one corner and go off and uh, it takes a uh, 24 hours for people to realize that uh, some new pups have come immediately message used to come though they were not very happy with our <laughs> work working or uh, looking after stray animals but this message definitely used to come telling that yes there are <laughs> new arrivals <laughs> so the new arrivals went <laughs> went on and on and uh, we have reached this stage so our uh, vision to that extent was that we should expand our area of operation but for that we cannot handle only two of us cannot handle so we thought that perhaps when we establish ourselves there will be more people trying to support us in terms of physical work right. as well then we will be able to assign <coughs> people for okay ambatu reset uh, uh, so for me some person uh, he is able to take care okay we'll give him support and he is able to take care of another 20 dogs or 30 dogs another like that we had the, the thing which currently it is not ha- happening ab uh, left over cells now we <laughs> our hands are terribly full but we are not able to say no uh, as i said 80 to 90% we have uh, succeeded in sterilizing the dogs uh, available there particularly the female ones but still there are 8 or 10 of them which are very very sensitive they don't permit to despite our feeding them for more than a year or two but they don't come anywhere near and uh, they are wary of being caught so they if they give litter we can't right. abandon them so that will get added up to the 200 that's how it has come up to 200 oh. but uh, that was uh, the thing so we thought that perhaps uh, particularly more uh, in addition to food should be the medical administration because veterinary care is more important the veterinary care because it happens they are all out on the road and uh, with the high speed vehicles we have particularly two wheelers Uh, they cannot stand a test to the high speed vehicles a normal good old fiat and ambassador they could <laughs> match with match, not these days yeah now not these days so they get very badly injured in no time what is your uh, i wouldn't say advice i mean generally like i i will i normally tell this to people we are nobody to advise yeah. but if if this has to start early for people who are watching this youngsters or you know whatever age group they belong to why is it important to be sensitive to animals 
around. Yeah, uh, see, animals are another creation of uh, God. So, God has created uh, animals also to live. So, we have to coexist. And the government is very, very clear under the constitution that I said, yes, uh, the ecosystem demands coexistence with animals. And uh, dogs are one of the major animals which is available in every corner of the country. So, instead of uh, when you see an animal languishing without food, without water, as a good human being or humaneness in you should permit you to look after that dog. I believe uh, if uh, youngsters think of even looking after one dog, one dog, one dog, at least for food and water and occasional medical requirement because at least getting the vet or taking to the vet and so that they are given the required medical advice, medical administration. So, even like feeders, feeders, intimidation of feeders is a criminal offense and right. punishable. People are not aware of that. So, they think that shouting at you, driving you out, people have funny excuses in preventing even that one meal reaching a dog. Or oh, even that meal reaching that a dog? That meal, yeah, people nobody don't is want happy. You they don't want you. Uh, the reason being, because you feed, they are here. Because you feed, more number of dogs come here. Because you feed, they uh, bark at night and we are unable to sleep. Because you feed, they litter all, all around. And they dirty the place. So, you have umpteen number of reasons to say <laughs> that. So, they should not be fed here. Right. Now, fed where? You have only common areas. Or otherwise, areas where adjoin uh, the villas or the bangalows or something like that. Now, you can't give feed, any feed anywhere in front of a bangalow or a side of a bangalow or a villa or an apartment. Where do you go? Mm -hmm. You don't have defined areas by the corporation or by the government telling that this is a feeding area for dogs. Then how many feeding areas are required? It is not possible, not possible. for the government to do that. So, they have to use a common area only where at least you, you, your area is not encroached. But the, the feel is uh, this. So, it is very difficult to come out of that feel. Unless your feeling is there, yes, they have to coexist. They have uh, the life to live in the same place where so they are born. So, it basically, I can put it this way. So, the awareness has to come from people that, uh, you know, they are coexist. They should, they they can coexist. Go coexist. They should. I would rather say they can coexist. Coexist. And number two, uh, be a little more life sensitive to other creatures other than human beings as uh, well. Yeah. So I can put it that way. So that. Yeah, way. exactly. <laughs> uh, that is what is needed. In fact, uh, I believe you see the Animal Welfare Board of India, which is called AWBI, you know, which is uh, the last few years only it shifted to North. Otherwise, it was in Chennai. AWBI headquarters. Right. Now, AWBA is in a place called Balabgad in Haryana, adjoining the suburbs of uh, Delhi. Now, AWBI has an arm, is, it is with the Animal Husbandry Department of every state, is supposed to have a, uh, um, to coordinate with the AWBI. AWBA gives the guidelines of uh, stray dogs, how maintenance, and offenses, etc., etc. They collate and keep on circulating. They again designate officers called animal welfare officers. Only thing is, the animal welfare officers are so far and few for a place like Chennai. Right. Unless you have people around, like Ambatur itself requires one animal welfare officer. Perhaps we have a few, <laughs> or, and they are available only on call because they are otherwise they are honorary animal welfare officers, and so they are pursuing their own profession. <laughs> so, they are literally not available for the help of people like NGOs and the thing where they can come and uh, help in supporting whatever we do. Right. So, the AWBI's guidelines should be circulated frequently by the government or by the animal welfare officers in the area of their operation in educating the people. So that it becomes part and parcel of your life. Repeatedly, it is told, yes, it is what they are doing is right, what is needed by them is right. So be a part of that. So at least if you are not a part of it, at least be a silent watcher. Permit it to happen. Yeah, don't don't 
antagonize don't antagonize don't uh, prevent people from, from helping uh, helping the voiceless creatures you you don't you don't take vacations because yeah, of absolutely uh, not because of uh, you have to feed that uh, yeah correct 200 uh, yeah, life forms and you t- you shared an interesting incident even for your wife's i mean for your daughter's wedding which happened in france you had to stay back to take care of the dog and yeah, your wife went for that <laughs> absolutely correct between us what we had decided that only one can be away at a time because the entire thing is in house the food is prepared in house now nobody else can do it it has to be either she in the worst situation i can do a little bit of it if both of us have to be away and it can be for very short while so and uh, leaving for a long period the visit to paris for the marriage means it is 7 days 7 days means so many things how do you miss your daughter's wedding i mean it's something amazing then nai will support podunu adu or periya manasu venala sir it's like a, it's being so selfless only we had to convince uh, only the sambandhis <laughs> there will be one the boys parents telling that only one of us can come either you come here and marry so in that case all of you can come here and we'll be able to attend marry even attending the marriage within the city is means going to be a part time so she can attend for some time i can attend for some time <laughs> both of us to be away means that either it has to be in the later half now what we have arrived at is the later half 2:30 3 o'clock and everything is over between 3 to 6 somewhere we have to visit some people we have to visit we we'll try to go and uh, giving keeping the because food portion feed, feeding is over and uh, some one person is at home for any emergency which can he can rise because nobody is here to even uh, know what is happening i'm really amazed uh, so by what the recent said. thing was <laughs> the daughter's wedding so she i agreed that yes but she wanted to be there and uh, he said okay we have to be there <laughs> amazing So that is you can't do. Two hundred uh, monsters are looking towards you, and if it does not happen, if it does not happen, what will happen? See, pakti vite karang leke sa pakti le oru vela sa padu yarakme kudu kudu kora manasil le manasil leke. I mean, the world is going uh, towards being so selfish. In the mari oru time le I think you feeding and you cancelling your dot of sir ponnu or paye or kalyana na oru thamlo kalkil the most important thing. that you are willing to sacrifice and uh, feed the dogs i think i won't call it a sacrifice because mm. we wouldn't have been able to spend 24 hours outside Hello, without uh, something no it is <laughs> difficult to <laughs> think of so in the conversation undu or vyathasamana kannotta tha ungalku or sindhanai nu solla maten or vidaya vadachirukku na nambare so manushangala mattum paathukiradhu mattum illama மற்ற உயிரினங்களுக்கும் நம்ம சென்சிட்டிவாக இருக்கணும் அவங்களையும் நம்ம கோ எக்ஸிஸ்ட் பண்ண வைக்கணும் இந்த புரிதல் வரணுன்றதுக்காக இந்த உரையாடல் ஸோ இரநூறு நாய்களுக்கு வந்து சாப்பாடு போடுறதுன்றது இட்ஸ் நாட் அ ஜோக் நம்ம இந்த இப்போ இருக்க காலத்தில் பக்கத்து வீட்டுக்காரங்கன்னு கிடையாது பக்கத்தில் இருக்க மனுஷனை கூட என்னென்னு கேட்குறதுக்கு மக்களுக்கு வந்து நேரம் கிடையாது சூழல் அப்படி இருக்குது ஸோ அந்த இடத்துல வந்து ஒரு லைஃபே ஒரு சாக்ரிஃபைஸ் பண்ணி விலங்குகளையும் பார்த்துக்கணும்னு பண்ணுற என்னோ கிருஷ்ணன் சார் இருக்குது ஐ ரியலி அப்ரிஷியேட் தட் இந்த மாதிரி நிறைய பேர் பண்ணிட்டு இருக்கீங்க நிறைய பேர் பண்ணிட்டு இருக்காங்க அவங்க ஊரில் ஸோ ஐ திங்க் இது எல்லாருக்கும் இந்த மெசேஜ் எல்லாருக்கும் போய் சேரும் நம்புகிறேன் ஸோ லைஃப்பில் இந்த மாதிரி விஷயம் பண்ணுறவங்களுக்கு நம்ம சப்போர்ட் பண்ணணும் ஃபினான்ஷியலாகவும் சரி வாலண்டியரிங்லாகவும் சரி வாட் எவர் வே வி கேன் ஸோ ஸ்கூபிஸ் அனிமல் கேர் அப்படின்னு சொல்லிட்டு ஒரு சொசைட்டி நடத்திட்டு இருக்காரு அவர் இட்ஸ் அன் என்ஜிஓ ஒன்றும் நான் ப்ராஃபிட் அது இதில் நீங்கள் டொனேட் பண்ணுறதுனால ஒன்றும் அவர் வீட்டுக்கு போக போகிறதோ இல்லை அவங்க குடும்பத்தில் அந்த காசு போய் சேர போகிறது இல்லை எங்கேயோ இந்த வாயில்லாத உயிரினங்களுக்கு அது உணவாக தான் போய் சேரப்போகுது நீங்கள் எதாவது கான்ட்ரிபியூட் பண்ணணும்னு நினச்சிங்கன்னா இந்த வீடியோக்கு கீழே அவரோட டீட்டெயில்ஸ் நான் ஷேர் பண்ணியிருக்கேன் எங்கள் டீம் ஷேர் பண்ணுவாங்க யூ கேன் சப்போர்ட் தேம் தேங்க்யூ தேங்க்யூ சார் தேங்க்யூ ஸோ மச் அண்ட் இந்த சர்வீஸ் தொடர்ந்து பண்ணுங்கள் தேங்க்யூ ஸோ மச் ஸோ கைண்ட் ஆஃப் யூ யூ கேவ் மீ ஆப்பர்ச்சுனிட்டி டு அட்லீஸ்ட் ஷேர் வாட் எவர் வி ஆர் டூயிங் அண்ட் பை தே திஸ் வி ஹாவ் எக்ஸம்ஷன் வி ஹவ் ரிசீவ் த எக்ஸம்ஷன் அண்ட் ஐடிஜி ஃப்ரம் த இன்கம் டேக்ஸ் டிபார்ட்மெண்ட் ஆஸ் வெல் ஸோ வாட் எவர் கண்ட்ரிபியூஷன்ஸ் ஆர் மேட் டு திஸ் சொசைட்டி is uh, exempted from tax sure so perfect so i think that's a valid point i think uh, people would, would want to volunteer i think uh, they will <laughs> thank you sir kind thank of you so much. thank you so much